There are many ways to define an array. For example, I can define my array that I'll name empty simply by putting in square brackets. And now I have an empty array that I can add items to. Of course, that does change the meaning of the name of the variable empty, but nonetheless, I can say, for example, empty offset zero equals one and empty offset one equals two and now empty is not so empty and if I say alert empty and we run that application we get one comma two the contents of the formerly empty array another way to define an array is to define the members when you create it and so I can fill in my primes array debating whether one is a prime and then I can at any time extract from my array using offset notation. So the third prime is going to be at offset and I'm going to leave that as a question for a moment and the way you figure that out is one two three is the third prime and that's at offset zero one two. Remember that the third prime will be at three minus one because we have zero offset. And we can see that as well. Let's comment out the earlier alert and run this program. And there's our third prime. Arrays do not need to have uniform types in them. So I can create an array and set it to have the value one and hello and false. And that's a perfectly valid array and I can extract any of those values using the offset. So here I'm going to extract the final value and set that as truth, put in an alert and let's run the application. And sure enough, it comes up false because that was the third member of my array at offset two. Remember that the length of an array tells you how many members are in the array, not the highest index of the array. Here I've set my array length to my array dot length, getting the length property from the array and I've put that value into an alert and sure enough it comes up and says 3 which is the length of that array. You can add to arrays after they're created and let's create a small function that uses that capability. We'll call our function range it will take one parameter, which is the max, that's the number that we want the range to go up to. And in the function, we're going to have a return value, which is an empty array. We'll then add a for loop to populate that array. Let's take a quick look at the for loop. It's going to create a counter called i, which it will initialize to zero. It will count until i is less, while i is less than max, incrementing i each time through the for loop. And it will set the ith offset, so first zero, then one, then two, equal to i times two. It will then return that value. Notice, by the way, that the for loop uses the counter variable i. Using i and then j and then k as counter variables is an old programmer tradition going all the way back to Fortran where those were the required identifiers for counters. And for small loops, it is very much the tradition to continue to use i and if you have a nested for a loop, then j and k as your counter variables. This is very much akin to why the 
roads in Boston are so twisty. They were built on old cow paths. Old traditions die hard. We can see the result of this method by calling alert and passing in range and giving it a value, let's say five for its maximum. And then let's run this application. And sure enough, we get five values.